Shalom Israel, this is Bishop Nathaniel. The Israelites have been scattered across the four corners of the earth, as prophesied in Deuteronomy, the 20th chapter. Here in Israel, united in Christ, we need your help to recover the remnant of our people, teach them the gospel. Please help us, support us, and join or donate to the Booster Club today. Shalom. Hey, Shalom Israel, we're doing our segment, 15 Minutes with the Captains. I'm Captain Yan, and to my left. So you said. So what we're dealing with is depression. This is the second part of the series, depression. Now you've seen some of the points that we made in the last video that you saw a month ago, um, because we do these videos every month. We're always trying to educate to show our people from the scriptures the solution. That's one thing you'll learn from the Israelites. We ev we deal with the scriptures with everything. So we want to read this article concerning mental health. Let's read the first paragraph. Facts and statistics. This is concerning depression and mental health that affects blacks and Hispanics. Come on. Although anyone can develop a mental health problem, African Americans sometimes experience more severe forms of mental health. Okay. Conditions due to unmet needs and other barriers. Uh huh. According to the Health and Human Services Office of Minority Health, African Americans are 20% more likely to experience serious mental health problems than the general population. More, it says, read that part again, we're more what? More likely to experience serious mental health problems than the general population. Than the general population, why? Now why is it? Because we suffer from the curses of Deuteronomy 28, keep reading. African American youth who are exposed to violence are at a greater risk for PTSD by over 25%. Now PTSD is post-traumatic, Stress disorder. Stress disorder. I was going to say slave disorder, but Dr. Joy DeGruy, she calls it post-traumatic slave syndrome. This, The actual term is PTSD, post-traumatic slave disorder. And she said something that I like. This is one of the definitions for post-traumatic slave disorder. Post-traumatic stress disorder. PTSD, an exa exaggerated startled response. Do we suffer from that as black people? Yes, we do. A feeling of foreshortened future. Do we suffer from that? Yes, we do. Now, she calls it multi-generational trauma. God calls it the curses. Let's start off with the same scripture that we did before, Deuteronomy 28, 28. We have to start off with Deuteronomy 28. Everything goes back to that. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 28. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall smite thee with madness mm -hmm. and blindness and astonishment of heart. This will affect all of our people. Now, part of the solution to that, on the last segment, we showed you that God says you have to love your character. You have to love your soul. You have to love yourself. In this segment, we're going to show you another thing about to cure your depression. You got to know your history. You need to know who you are. Who are we according to the Bible? Who are, what's your, what's your history? Who are your ancestors? Now give me Job chapter eight, verse eight. We suffer from what Dr. Joy DeGru calls it, a multi-generational trauma. Meaning if you've seen the movie, remember the movie, it was Antoine Fisher. Antoine had an, uh, he was always upset. And what, how did, what did he do with that anger? He would fight, he would fight. Now, his therapist was Denzel Washington. So uh, I forgot his name in the movie. Denzel Washington's name in the movie. But Antoine Fisher goes to him and he needs somebody to help him understand where's all this pain coming from. Denzel gave him a book and it was called The Slave Community. And in the book, Denzel was trying to show him that a lot of the problems black people have goes back to slavery. So now, guess what? We've been enslaved. Why? Why? Because of the curses of Deuteronomy 28. So something that's going to help our spirits 
is reading the scriptures. So read Job 8 and 8. Job chapter 8 and verse 8. For inquire, I pray thee, of the former age. Inquire of the former age. Come on. And prepare thyself to the search of their fathers. You want to cure your depression? The Bible says to prepare yourself to the search of your fathers. Come on. For we are but of yesterday uh -huh. and know nothing. Because our days upon earth are a shadow. Our days upon earth are a shadow. Now go to Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 45. Leviticus 26 verse 45. Because if you read these scriptures and you understand who your ancestors are, you're not going to be depressed. You're not going to be depressed because you're going to understand where you're going. You're going to understand a future. You will understand what your purpose is. That's our problem as blacks and Hispanics. We don't know our purpose. Come on, read this. Leviticus chapter 26 and verse 45. Come on. But I will for their sakes remember the covenant of their ancestors. Do y'all hear that? The Bible says God will for our sakes remember the covenant of of our ancestors. We have ancestors, brothers. We have ancestors, sisters. Come on. Whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt uh -huh. in the sight of the heathen uh -huh. that I might be their God. Uh -huh. I am the Lord. Now go to 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 16. Did some of our forefathers have that mind, have a, what do they call it? A low inferiority complex. Did some of our forefathers suffer from that? Yes, yes. Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 15. Let's see what happened with Saul. Yes. 1 Samuel chapter 15 and verse 16. Uh-huh. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, I will, I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say, say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight. Now when you read this, this is when Saul started to go off. He was rebellious. Samuel had to remind Saul something about him in the past. Because when Saul first was called, go to 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 19. 1 Samuel chapter 9 and verse 19. This is when Saul is called to be king of Israel. Watch this. And Samuel answered Saul and said, I am the seer. Go up before me unto the high place, for ye shall eat with me today. And tomorrow I will let thee go. And will tell thee all that is in thine heart. And as for thine asses that were lost three days ago, set not thy mind on them, for they are found. And on whom is all the desire of Israel? Is, is it not on thee and on all thy father's house? So Saul is being called to be king. And Samuel says all the desire of Israel is going to be to you. Watch Saul's response. Come on. And Saul answered and said, Am not I a Benjamite? Hold on, Samuel. Now, everybody knows the Most High is dealing with you, but do you know I'm a Benjamite? Come on. Of the smallest of the tribes of Israel? I'm of the smallest of the tribes of Israel. Come on. And my family the least of all the families of the tribe of Benjamin? And my family is the least. Why? Because Saul did not view himself the way he was supposed to. He had that inferiority complex. Meaning what? Who am I? I'm not, I'm not called like you, Samuel. I'm just a regular brother. Now go back to 1 Samuel 15. Now this is years later. Saul rebels against the Most High God. Samuel, because remember, Saul was king. Saul now had money, wealth. He had power. So you're not suffering from depression no more. Samuel reminds Saul, do you remember how you viewed yourself years ago? Watch this. Read this now. First Samuel chapter 15 verse 16. Then Samuel said unto Saul, Stay, and I will tell thee what the Lord hath said to me this night. And he said unto him, Say on. And Samuel said, When thou wast little in thine own sight, was thou not made the head of the tribes of Israel? And the Lord anointed thee king over Israel? And the Lord sent thee on a journey and said, So you see what he said? When thou wast little in thine own sight. When you were little in your own sight, Saul had a, what? how did he view himself? Small. He had a, a low inferior, how does it go? A low self-esteem. A low inferiority complex. This is how he viewed himself. Samuel reminded him of that. Now go to 1 Kings chapter 16 verse 1. 1 Kings chapter 16 and verse 1. 
So don't think some of our forefathers in the scriptures didn't suffer from the same thing. They did. They viewed themselves as I'm a nobody. I'm, who, who am I? But the most high is the one that's telling us, no, 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 you ain't nobody. You are somebody. Remember, we're the seed of the nation of Israel. First Kings chapter 16, verse one. You had the northern kingdom king, Baasha. Watch what this man says. Come on. First Kings chapter 16, verse one. Then the word of the Lord came to Jehu, the son of Hanani, against Baasha, saying. Because Baasha eventually went off against the most high God and was wicked. Come on. For as much as I exalted thee over the dust. For as much as I exalted thee out of the dust. Out of the dust. Meaning what? You were from confusion. You were a nobody. But the most I said, I exalted you out of that. Come on. And made thee prince over my people Israel. Uh -huh. And thou hast walked in the way of Jeroboam. Uh -huh. And hast made my people Israel to sin. Uh -huh. To provoke me to anger with their sins. So you see, Baasha came from nothing as well. The most high takes us from that state of mind. It's a state of mind. Depression is a spirit. You got to get rid of it. Remember, get Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. Deuteronomy chapter 7 and verse 6. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. Uh -huh. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Above all people that are upon the face of the earth. God calls us special. God calls us special. Now, it is our job to remind ourselves day to day how special we are and that we do accept the calling. And listen, the most important part, that we believe the calling. Go to now Psalm chapter 113 and verse 5. So you at home watching online, you say, I'm not sure about the Israelites. I don't know. I, not me. God is that. No, the most high God is dealing with you. So it's time for you to join. It's time for you to join this movement. It's time for you to put your brick in because we got to help all of our people that suffer from depression. We got to help all of our people that actually have thoughts of suicide. Because they don't know this message. They never heard this gospel. So listen good to this right here. Psalms 113 and verse 5. Psalms chapter 113 and verse 5. Who is like unto the Lord our God who dwelleth on high? There is nobody like the most high God. Come on. Who humbleth himself to behold the things that are in heaven and in earth. Now we're in earth. Listen good. Come on. He raises up the poor out of the dust. So a lot of us suffer from poverty, but God says he will raise you up out of the dust. Come on. And lifteth the needy out of the dunghill. We're the needy. We're the ones that need help all the time. The Bible says he's going to lift up the needy. Come on. That he may set him with princes. We are meant to be set up as princes. Come on. Even with the princes of his people. Even indeed with the princes of his people. Come on. He maketh the barren woman to keep house. He maketh the sisters that cannot have children. You at home, you sister, you are depressed because you're saying, why can't I have child? Why did the most high? Why did God do this to me? What did he say to y'all sisters? Come on. And to be a joyful mother of children. He made you sisters that suffer from depression because you can't have children. Or you sisters that suffer from depression because you don't feel as though you understand what your purpose is. You sisters, God says, he made you to be a joyful mother of children. He said he made you to be a joyful mother of children. See, you don't look at yourself like that. You're looking at yourself as, I'm just a regular mother. I'm just a, I, I'm barely a mother. I'm not that smart. I'm not that well educated. But you don't realize you have the Bible. You have communication with the higher power. All you have to do is what? Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10. Wait, before we go there, can we read verse 9 again? That was heavy. Read verse 9 again. Verse, excuse me, Psalms chapter 113, verse 9. He maketh the barren woman to keep house and to be a joyful mother of children. Praise ye the Lord. It says, praise ye the Lord. Now get Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. He made you sisters to be a 
joyful mother. And y'all, you sisters, the black and Hispanic woman, y'all listening online, y'all have to raise the children, our children, the young men, in joy, in joy. Read this. Nehemiah chapter 8 and verse 10. Then he said unto them, go your way, eat the fat and drink the sweet and send portions unto them for whom nothing is prepared. Come on. For this day is holy unto our Lord. Uh huh. Neither be ye sorry. For the joy of the Lord is your strength. That's the answer. The joy of the Lord is our strength. That is the answer. All right. So that's the second series. The second part of our series, Depression. We hope you learned something today. All right. Shalom. Shalom. Okay. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling These are how our men repented at heart The scriptures is proof IUIC, we deliver the truth